mercenaries followed him to Rome to grace in captive bonds his chariot wheels? You blocks. You stones. You worse than senseless things. Knew you not, Pompey. Many a time and oft have you climbed up to walls and battlements, your infants in your arms, and there have sat the live long day with patient expectation to see great Pompey pass the streets of Rome. And do you now put on your best attire? And do you now call out a holiday? And do you now strew flowers in his way that comes in triumph over Pompey's blood? Be gone! Run to your houses! Fall upon your knees and pray to the gods to intermit the plague that needs must light on this ingratitude! They vanish, tongue-tied in their guiltiness. Go you down the way towards the capital. This way will I. Disrobe the images if you do find them decked with ceremonies. May we do so? You know, it is the feast of Lupercal. It is no matter. Let no images be hung with Caesar's trophies. All about and drive away the vulgar from the streets. So do you too, where you perceive them thick. These growing feathers plucked from Caesar's wing will make him fly in ordinary pitch. Who else would soar above the view of men and keep us all in servile fearfulness? Calvernia! Peace! Ho! Oh, Caesar speaks. Calvernia! Here, my lord. Stand due directly in Antonius' way when he doth run his course. Antonius! Caesar, my lord. Forget not in your speed, Antonius, to touch Calpurnia. For our elders say the baron, touched in this holy chase, shake off their sterile curse. I shall remember. When Caesar says, do this, it is performed. Set on, and leave no ceremony out. Caesar! Ha! Who calls? Bid every noise be still. Peace yet again. Who is it in the press that calls on me? I hear a voice shriller than all the music cries, Caesar! Speak, Caesar is turned to hear. Where the Ides of March? What man is that? A soothsayer bids you beware the Ides of March. Set him before me, let me see his face. Fellow, come from the throng, look upon Caesar. What sayest thou to me now? Speak, once again. Well, the Ides of March. He is a dreamer. Let us leave him. Pass! Will you go to see the order of the course? Not I. I pray you do. I am not gamesome. I do lack some part of that quick spirit that is in Antony. Let me not hinder, Cassius, your desires. I'll leave you. Brutus, I do observe you now of late. You bear too stubborn and too strange a hand over your friend that loves you. Cassius, be not deceived. If I have veiled my look, I turn the trouble of my countenance merely upon myself. Vexed I am, of late, with passions of some difference. But let not therefore my good friends be grieved, among which number Cassius you be one. Nor construe any further my neglect than that poor Brutus, with himself at war, forgets the shows of love to other men. Then, Brutus, I have much mistook your passion. Tell me, good Brutus, can you see your face? No, Cassius. For the eye sees not itself, but by reflection, by some other things. Tis just, and it is very much lamented, Brutus, that you have no such mirrors as will turn your hidden worthiness into your eye, that you might see your shadow. I have heard where many of the best respect in Rome except immortal Caesar, speaking of Brutus and groaning underneath this age's yoke, having wished that noble Brutus had his eyes. Into what dangers would you lead me, Cassius, that you would have me seek into myself for that which is not in me? Therefore, good Brutus, be prepared to hear, and since you know you cannot see yourself so well as by reflection, I, your glass, will modestly discover to yourself that of yourself which you yet know not of. What means this shouting? 
I do fear that the people choose Caesar for their king. I do you fear it? Then I must think you would not have it so. I would not. Yet I love him well. Wherefore you hold me here so long? What is it that you would impart to me? If it ought be toward the general good, set honor in one eye and death in the other, and I will look on them both indifferently. So let the gods so speed me as I love the name of honor more than I fear death. I know that virtue to be in you, Brutus, as well as I do know your outward favor. Well, honor is the subject of my story. I cannot tell what you and other men think of this life, but for my single self, I had as lief not be as lived to be in awe of such a thing as I myself. I was born as free as Caesar. So were you. We both have fed as well, and we can both endure the winter's cold as well as he. For once, upon a raw and gusty day, the troubled Tiber chafing with her shores, Caesar said to me, Darest thou, Cassius, now leap in with me into this angry flood, and swim to yonder point. Upon the word accoutred as I was, I plunged in and bade him follow. So indeed he did. The torrent roared, and we did buffet it. But ere we could arrive, the point proposed. Caesar cried, Help me, Cassius, or I sink! I, as Aeneas, our great ancestor, did from the flames of Troy upon his shoulders the old Anchises bear. So from the waves of Tiber did I the tired Caesar. And this man is now become a god, and Cassius is a wretched creature, and must bend her body if Caesar carelessly but not on her. Another general shout. I do believe these applauses are for some new honors that are heaped on Caesar. Why, man? He doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus, and we petty men walk under his huge legs and peep about to find ourselves dishonorable graves. Men at some time are masters of their fates. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. Brutus and Caesar. What should be in that Caesar? Why should that name be sounded more than yours? Write them together. Yours is as fair a name. Sound them. It doth become the mouth as well. Weigh them. It is as heavy. Conjure with them. Brutus will start a spirit as soon as Caesar. Upon what meat doth this our Caesar feed that he is grown so great? Age, thou art shamed. Rome, thou hast lost the breed of noble bloods. When could they say till now that talked of Rome that her wide walls encompass but one man? Now is it Rome indeed and room enough when there is in it but one only man? Oh, you and I have heard our fathers say there was a Brutus once that would have brooked the eternal devil to keep his state in Rome as easily as a king. That you do love me, I am nothing jealous. What you would work me to, I have some aim. How I have thought of this and of these times, I shall recount hereafter. For this present, I would not. So with love, I might further entreat you, be any further moved. What you have said, I will consider. What you have to say, I will with patience hear, and find a time both to meet and answer such high things. Till then, my noble friend, Chew upon this. Brutus had rather be a villager than to repute himself a son of Rome under these hard conditions, as this time is like to lay upon us. I am glad that my weak words have struck but thus much show of fire from Brutus. The games are done, and Caesar's returning. As they pass by, pluck Casca by the sleeve, and he will, after his sour fashion, tell you what hath preceded worthy note today. I will do so, but look you, Cassius, the angry spot doth glow on Caesar's brow and all the rest look like a chidden train. Casca will tell us what the matter is. Antonius. Caesar. Let me have men about me that are fat, sleek-headed men such as sleep well o' nights. Young Cassius has a lean and hungry look. She thinks too much, such ones are dangerous. 
Fear her not, Caesar. She's not dangerous. She is a noble Roman and well given. Would she were fatter. But I fear her not. Yet if my name were liable to fear, I do not know the man I should avoid so soon as that spare Cassius. She reads much. She is a great observer, and she looks quite through the deeds of men. She loves no plays, as thou dost, Antony. She hears no music. Such ones as she be never at heart's ease, whilst they behold a greater than themselves. I rather tell thee what is to be feared than what I fear, for always I am Caesar. Come, on my right hand, for this year is deaf. Tell me truly what thou thinkst of her. You pulled me by the cloak. Would you speak with me? I, Casca, tell us what a chance today. Why, you were with him, were you not? I should not then ask Casca what had chanced. Why, there was a crown offered him, and being offered him, he put it by with the back of his hand, thus. And then the people fell a shouting. What was the second noise for? Why, for that too. They shouted thrice. What was the last cry for? Why, for that too. Was the crown offered him thrice? Ay, Mary, wast, and he put it by thrice, each time gentler than the last. And at each putting by, mine honest neighbors shouted. Who offered him the crown? Why, Antony. Tell us the manner of it, gentle Casca. I can as well be hanged as tell the manner of it. It was mere foolery. I did not mark it. I saw Mark Antony offer him a crown. Yet, t'was not a crown neither. T'was one of those coronets. And, as I told you, he put it by once. But, for all that, to my thinking, he would fain have had it. Then, he offered it to him again. Then he put it by again, but to my thinking, he was very loath to lay his fingers off it. And then he offered it the third time. He put it the third time by, and still, as he refused it, the rabblement hooted and clapped their chapped hands and threw up their sweaty nightcaps and uttered such a deal of stinking breath because Caesar refused the crown that it had almost choked Caesar for he swooned and fell down at it. And for mine own part, I durst not laugh for fear of opening my lips and receiving the bad air. But soft, I pray you what? Did Caesar swoon? He fell down in the marketplace and foamed at the mouth and was speechless. This very like, he hath the falling sickness. No. Caesar hath it not, but you and I and honest Casca, we have the falling sickness. I know not what you mean by that, but I am sure Caesar fell down. If the Tagrag people did not clap him and hiss him according as he pleased and displeased them, as they used to do the players in the theater, I am no true man. What said he when he came unto himself? Mary, before he fell down, when he perceived the common herd was glad he refused the crown, he plucked me up his doublet and offered them his throat to cut. And so he fell. When he came to himself again, he said, if he had done or said anything amiss, he desired their worships to think it was his infirmity. Three or four wenches where I stood cried, alas, good soul, and forgave him with all their hearts. But there is no heed to be taken of them. If Caesar had stabbed their own mothers, they would have done no less. And after that, he came thus sad away. Aye. Did Cicero say anything? Aye, he spoke Greek. To what effect? Nay, and I'll tell you that, I'll never look you in the face again. But those that understood him smiled at one another and shook their heads. But for mine own part, it was Greek to me. <sighs> Fare you well. There was more foolery yet, if I could remember it. Will you sup with me tonight, Casca? 
No, I am promised forth. Will you dine with me tomorrow? Aye, if I be alive and your mind hold and your dinner worth the eating. Good. I will expect you. Do so. Farewell, both. What a blunt fellow is this grunt to be. He was quick metal when we went to school. This rudeness is a sauce to his good wit, which gives men stomach to digest his words with better appetite. And so it is. For this time, I will leave you. Tomorrow, if you please to speak with me, I will come home to you. Or if you will, come home to me, and I will wait for you. I will do so. Till then, think of the world. Well, Brutus, thou art noble. Yet I see thy honorable metal may be wrought from that it is disposed. Therefore it is meet that noble minds keep ever with their likes, for who so firm that cannot be seduced? Caesar doth bear me hard, but he loves Brutus. If I were Brutus now, when he were Cassius, he should not humor me. I will this night in several hands and at his windows throw as if they came from several citizens, writings, all tending to the great opinion that Rome hold, holds of his name, wherein obscurely Caesar's ambition shall be glanced at. And after this, let Caesar seat him sure for we will shake him our worst days endure. Oh, good evening, Casca. Brought you Caesar home? Why are you breathless? And why stare you so? Are you not moved when all the sway of the earth shakes like a thing unfirm? Ligarius, I have seen tempests when the scolding winds have rived the knotty oaks, and I have seen the ambitious ocean swell and rage and foam, but never till tonight, never till now, did I go through a tempest dropping fire. Either there is a civil strife in heaven, or else the world too saucy with the gods incenses them to send destruction. Why, saw you anything more wonderful? Against the capital I met a lion, who glazed upon me and went surly by without annoying me. And there were drawn upon a heap a hundred ghastly women, transformed with their fear, who swore they saw men all in fire walk up and down the streets. And yesterday, the bird of night did sit, even at noonday, upon the marketplace, hooting and shrieking. When these prodigies do so conjointly meet, let not men say, these are their reasons, they are natural. For I believe they are portentous things unto the climate that they point upon. Indeed, it is a strange disposed time. But men may construe things after their fashion. Clean from the purpose of the things themselves. Come Caesar to the capital tomorrow. He doth. He did bid Antonius send word to you he would be there tomorrow. Good night then, Casca. This disturbed sky is not fit to walk in. Farewell, good Ligarius. Who's there? A Roman. Casca, by your voice. Your ear is good. Cassius, what night is this? A very pleasing night to honest men. Whoever knew the heavens menaced so? Those that have known the earth so full of faults. For my part, I have walked about the streets, submitting me into the perilous night, and thus embraced Casca, as you see, have bared, the have bared my bosom to the thunder stone. But wherefore did you so much tempt the heavens? You are dull, Casca, and those sparks of life that should be in a Roman you do want, or else you use not. You look pale and gaze and put on fear and cast yourself in wonder to see the strange impatience of the heavens. Now, could I, Casca, name to thee a man most like this dreadful night? That thunders, lightens, opens graves and roars as doth the lion in the capital. A man no mightier than thyself or me, in personal action yet prodigious grown and fearful as these strange eruptions are. 
to Caesar that you mean. Is it not Cassius? Let it be who it is. For Romans now have thews and limbs like to their ancestors. But woe the while our fathers' minds are dead and we are governed with our mothers' spirits. Our yoke and sufferance show us womanish. Indeed. They say the senators tomorrow mean to establish Caesar as a king. I know where I will wear this dagger then. Cassius, from bondage, will deliver Cassius. Therein, ye gods, we make the weak most strong. Therein, ye gods, you tyrants do defeat that part of tyranny that I do bear, I can shake off at pleasure. So can I. So every bondman in his own hand bears the power to cancel his captivity. And why should Caesar be a tyrant then? Those that with haste will make a mighty fire begin it with weak straws. What trash is Rome? What rubbish and what awful? When it serves for the base matter to illuminate so vile a thing as Caesar. But oh grief, where hast thou led me? I perhaps speak this before a willing bondman. Then I know my answer must be made, but I am armed, and my dangers are to me indifferent. You speak to Casca, and to such a man that is no fleeting telltale. Hold my hand. Be factious for redress of all these griefs, and I will set this foot of mine as far as who goes farthest. There's a bargain made. Now, know you, Casca, I have moved already some certain of the noblest-minded Romans to undergo with me an enterprise of honorable, dangerous consequence. Stand close for a while. Here comes the one in haste. To Cinna. I know him by his gate. He is a friend. Cinna, where haste you so? Find out you. Who is that? Matella Simber. No, it is Casca. One incorporate to our attempts. Am I not stayed for, Cinna? I am glad in it. What a fearful night is this. There's two or three of us have seen strange sights. Am I not stayed for? Tell me. Yes, you are, O Cassius. If you could but win the noble Brutus to our party. Be you content. Good Cinna. Take this paper, and look you lay it on the praetor's chair where Brutus may find it, and throw this in at his window. Set this up with wax upon old Brutus' statue. All this done, repair to Pompey's porch where you, where you shall find us. I will bestow these papers as you bade me. That done, repair to Pompey's theater. Come, Casca, and I will yet ere day see Brutus at his house. Three parts of him is ours already, and the man entire upon the next encounter yields him ours. Oh, he sits high in all the people's hearts, and that which would appear offense in us, his countenance, like richest alchemy, will change to virtue and to worthiness. Him and his worth and our great need of him you have right well conceded. Let us go, for it is after midnight, and ere day we will awake him and be sure of him. What, Lucius? Ho! Oh. I cannot, by the progress of the stars, give guess to how near today. Lucius, I say. Called you, my lord. Get me a taper in my study, Lucius. When it is lighted, come and call me here. I will, my lord. It must be by his death. And for my part, I know no personal cause to spurn at him, but for the general, he would be crowned. And then I grant we put a sting in him that at his will he may do danger with. The abuse of greatness is when it disjoins remorse from power. And to speak truth of Caesar, I have not known when his affection swayed more than his reason. Tis a common proof that lowliness is a young ambition's ladder, 
where to the climber upward turns his face, but when he once attains the utmost round unto the ladder turns his back, looks in the clouds, scorning the base degrees by which he did ascend. So Caesar may, then lest he may, prevent, and since the quarrel will bear no color for the thing he is, fashion it thus, that what he is augmented would run to these and these extremities, and therefore think him as a serpent's egg, which hatched would, as his kind, grow mischievous, and kill him in the shell. The taper burneth in your closet, sir. Searching the window for a flint, I found this paper thus sealed up, and I am sure it did not lie there when I went to bed. Is not tomorrow, boy, the Ides of March? I know not, sir. Look in the calendar and bring me word. I will, sir. Brutus, thou sleepst awake, and see thyself. Shall roam, etc. Speak, strike, redress. Brutus, thou sleepst awake. Such instigations have often dropped where I took them up. Speak, strike, or dress. Am I entreated to speak and strike? O oh, Rome, I make thee promise, if the redress will follow, thou receivest thy full petition at the hand of Brutus. Sir, March is wasted fourteen days. Tis good. Go to the gate, somebody knocks. Since Cassius first did wet me against Caesar, I have not slept. Between the acting of a dreadful thing and the first motion, all the interim is like a phantasma, a hideous dream. Sir, tis your cousin Cassius at the door who doth desire to see you. Is she alone? No, sir, there are more with her. Do you know them? No, sir. And their hats are plucked about their ears, and half their faces buried in their cloaks, that by no means I may discover them by any mark of favor. Let them enter. They are the faction. The conspiracy. Shamest thou to show thy dangerous brow by night. I think we are too bold upon your rest. Good morrow, Brutus. Do we trouble you? I've been up at this hour, awake all night. Know I these men that come along with you? Yes, every one of them. And no one here but honors you, and every one doth wish you had but that opinion of yourself, which every noble Roman bears of you. This Decius Brutus. He is welcome hither. This Casca, this Cinna, and this Metellus Cimber. They are all welcome. What watchful cares do interpose themselves betwixt your eyes and night? Shall I entreat a word? Here lies the east. Doth not the day break here? No. Oh, pardon, sir, it doth. And yon green lines that fret the clouds are messengers of day. <laughs> you shall confess that you are both deceived. Here, as I point my sword, the sun arises which is a great way growing on the south, weighing the youthful season of the year. Give me your hands all over, one by one. Then let us swear our resolution. No, not an oath. If not the face of men, the sufferance of our souls, the times of use, if these motives weak break off betimes in every man hence to his idle bed, so let high-sided tyranny range on. What need we any spur but our own cause to prick us to redress? What other bond than secret Romans that have spoke the word and will not palter? And what other oath than honesty to honesty engage that this shall be or we will fall for it? Swear priests and cowards and men cautious, such men as creatures doubt, but do not stain the even virtue of our enterprise. 
to think that, or our cause, or our performance did need an oath when every drop of blood that every Roman bears and nobly bears is guilty of several bastardy if he do break the smallest particle of any promise that hath passed from him. But what of Cicero? Shall we sound him? I think he will stand very strong with us. Let us not leave him out. No, by no means. But let us have him, for his silver hairs will purchase us a good opinion and buy men's voices to commend our deeds. Oh, name him not, for he will not follow anything that other men begin. Then leave him out. Indeed, he is not fit. Shall no man else be touched, but only Caesar? Decius, well urged. I think it is not meet Mark Antony, so well beloved of Caesar, should outlive Caesar. We shall find of him a shrewd contriver, and you know his means, if he improve them, may well stretch so far as to annoy us all, which to prevent, let Antony and Caesar fall together. Our course will seem too bloody, Caius Cassius, to cut the head off and then hack the limbs, like wrath and death and envy afterwards. For Antony is but a limb of Caesar. Let's be sacrificers, but not butchers, Caius. We all stand up against the spirit of Caesar, and in the spirit of men there is no blood. Oh, that we could come by Caesar's spirit and not dismember Caesar. But alas, Caesar must bleed for it. And gentle friends, let's kill him boldly, but not wrathfully. We shall be called perjurers, not murderers. And for Mark Antony, think not of him, for he can do no more than Caesar's arm when Caesar's head is off. Yet I fear him, for in the engrafted love he bears to Caesar. Alas, good Cassius, do not think of him. If he loves Caesar, all that he can do is to himself take thought and die for Caesar. There is no fear in him. Let him not die, for he will live and laugh at this hereafter. Peace. Count the clock. The clock hath stricken three. Tis time to part. But it is doubtful yet whether Caesar will come forth today or no. The unaccustomed terror of this night and the persuasion of his augurs may hold him from the capital today. Never fear that. If he be so resolved, I can always sway him. For he loves to hear that unicorns may be betrayed with trees, and bears with glasses, elephants with holes, lions with toils, and men with flatterers. But when I tell him he hates flatterers, he says he does, being then most flattered. Let me work. I can give his humor the true bent, and I will bring him to the capital. Nay, we will all of us be there to fetch him. By the eighth hour, is that the uttermost? Be that the uttermost, and fail not then. Caius Ligarius doth bear Caesar hard, who readed him for speaking well of Pompey. I wonder none of you have thought of him. Now, good Metellus, go along by him. He loves me well, and I have given him reasons. Send him but hither, and I'll fashion him. Morning comes upon us. We'll leave you, Brutus. And friends, disperse yourselves, but all remember what you have said and show yourselves true Romans. Good gentlemen, look fresh and merrily. Let not our looks put on our purposes. So good morrow to you, everyone. Boy, Lucius, fast asleep. It is no matter. Thou hast no figures or no fantasies which busy cares draws in the brains of men. Therefore thou sleep'st so sound. Brutus, my lord. Portia, what mean you? Wherefore you rise now? It is not for your health thus to commit to the raw, cold condition, to the raw, cold morning. Not for yours neither. You have ungently, Brutus, stole from my bed. And yesternight at supper, you suddenly arose and walked about, musing and sighing with your arms across. And when I asked you what the matter was, you stared upon me with ungentle looks. 
Yet I insisted, yet you answered not, but with an angry wafter of your hand gave sign for me to leave you. So I did, hoping it was but an effect of humor, which sometime hath his hour with every man. It will not let you eat, nor talk, nor sleep, and could it work so much upon your shape as it hath much prevailed on your condition, I should not know you, Brutus. Dear, my lord, make me acquainted with your cause of grief. I am not well in health, and that is all. Brutus is wise, and were he not in health, he would embrace the means to come by it. Why, so I do. Good Portia, go to bed. Is Brutus sick? And is it physical to walk unbraced and suck up the humors of the dank morning? What, is Brutus sick? And will he steal out of his wholesome bed to dare the vile contagion of the night and tempt the roomy and unpurged air to add unto his sickness? No my Brutus, you have some sick offense within your mind, which by the right and virtue of my place I ought to know of. And here, upon my, upon my knees, I charm you by my once commended beauty that you unfold to me, yourself, your half, what is making you heavy? And what men have been here tonight? For here have been some six or seven who did hide their faces even from darkness. Kneel not, gentle Portia. <laughs> I should not need if you were gentle Brutus. Within the bond of marriage, tell me, Brutus, is it accepted that I should know no secrets that appertain to you? Am I yourself, but as it were, in sort or limitation, to keep with you at meals, comfort your bed, and talk to you sometimes? Dwell I but in the suburbs of your good pleasure? If it be no more, Portia is Brutus' harlot. Not his wife. You are my true and honorable wife, as dear to me as the ruddy drops that visit my sad heart. If this were true, then I should know the secret. I grant I am a woman, but withal a woman that Lord Prudus took to wife. I grant I am a woman, but withal a woman well reputed, Cato's daughter. Think you I am no stronger than my sex, being so fathered and so husbanded? Tell me your counsels. I will not disclose them. I have made strong proof of my constancy, given myself here a voluntary wound in my thigh. Can I bear that with patience and not my husband's secrets? O oh, ye gods, render me worthy of this noble wife! Hark, hark, one knocks. Portia, go in a while, and by and by thy bosom shall partake the secrets of my heart. Leave me with haste. <sighs> Lucius, who's that Knox? He is a sick man that would speak with you. Caius Ligarius. Themetella spake of. Out safe good morrow from a feeble tongue. Oh, what a time have you chose out, brave Caius, to wear a kerchief. Would you were you not sick? I am not sick, if Brutus have in hand any exploit worthy the name of honor. Such an exploit have I in hand, Ligarius, had you a healthful ear to hear of it. By all the gods that Romans bow before, I here discard my sickness. Soul of Rome, thou, like an exorcist, hast conjured up my mortified spirit. Now, bid me run, and I will strive with things impossible. Yea, get the better of them. What's to do? A piece of work that will make sick men whole. But are not some whole that we must make sick? That must we also. What it is, my Caius, I shall unfold to thee, as we are going to whom it must be done. Set on your foot, and with a heart new fired I follow you, to do I know not what, but it sufficeth that Brutus leads me on. 
follow me then. That nor heaven nor earth hath been at peace tonight. Thrice hath Calpurnia in her sleep cried out, Help! Ho, oh, they murder Caesar! Who's within? What mean you, Caesar? Think you to walk forth? You shall not stir out of your house today. Caesar shall forth. The things that threatened me now looked but on my back. When they shall see the face of Caesar, they are vanishing. Caesar, I never stood on ceremonies. Yet now they fright me. There is one within besides the things we have heard and seen, recounts most horrid seen by the watch. A lioness hath whelped in the streets, and graves have yawned and yielded up their dead. The noise of battle hurtled in the air, horses did neigh, and dying men did groan. And ghosts did shriek and squeal about the streets. O oh, Caesar! These things are beyond all use, and I do fear them. What can be avoided, whose end is purposed by the mighty gods? Yet Caesar shall forth, for these predictions are to the world in general as to Caesar. When beggars die, there are no comets seen. The heavens themselves blaze forth for the death of princes. Cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant? Never taste of death but once. Caesar should be a beast without a heart if he should stay at home today for fear. No, Caesar shall not. Danger knows full well that Caesar is more dangerous than he. We are two lions. Well bid in one day, and I the elder and more terrible, and Caesar shall fall. Alas, my lord, your wisdom is consumed in confidence. Do not go forth today. Call it my fear that keeps you in the house and not your own. We shall send Mark Antony to the Senate house and he shall say, you are not well. Let me, upon my knee, prevail in this. Mark Antony shall say, I am not well. And for thy humor, I will stay at home. Here's Dacius Brutus. He shall tell them so. Uh, Caesar, all hail! Good morrow, worthy Caesar. I come to fetch you to the Senate House. And you are come in very happy time to bear my greetings to the senators and tell them that I will not come today. That cannot is false, and that I dare not falser. I will not come today. Tell them so, Dacius. Say he is sick. Shall Caesar send a lie? Dacius, tell them Caesar will not come. Most mighty Caesar, let me know some cause, lest I be laughed at when I tell them so. The cause is in my will. I will not come. That is enough to satisfy the Senate. But for your own private satisfaction, because I love you, I will let you know. My wife, Calpurnia here, stays me at home. She dreamt tonight she saw my statue, which like a fountain with a hundred spouts did run pure blood. And many lusty Romans came smiling and did bathe their hands in it. And these does she apply for warnings and portents and evils imminent. And on her knee hath begged that I will stay at home today. This dream is all misinterpreted. It was a vision, fair and fortunate. Your statue, a spouting blood in many pipes, which so many smiling Romans bathe, signifies that from you great Rome shall suck reviving blood, and great men shall press for tinctures, stains, relics, and cognizance. This, by Calpurnia's dream, is signified. And this way have you well expounded it. I have, when you have heard what I can say. And know it now, the Senate have concluded to give this day a crown to mighty Caesar. If you shall tell them, send them word that you will not come today, their minds may change. Besides, it were a mock apt to be rendered for someone to say, break up the Senate to another time when Caesar's wife shall meet with better dreams. 
if Caesar hide himself? Shall they not whisper? Lo, Caesar is afraid. Pardon me, Caesar. But my dear, dear love to our proceedings, bid me tell you this, and reason to my love is liable. How foolish do your fears seem now, Calpurnia? I am ashamed I did yield to them. Give me my robe, for I will go. And look where Cinna is now come to fetch me. Good morrow, Caesar. Cinna, welcome hither. What, Brutus? Are you up stirred so early too? Good morrow, Casca. Caius Ligarius, Caesar was ne'er so much your enemy as that same ague which hath made you lean. <laughs> what is to clock? Caesar, tis struck an eight. I thank you for your pains and courtesy. See, Antony, that rebel's long old knight, is notwithstanding. Good morrow, Antony. For so to most noble Caesar. I am to be blamed to be thus waited for. Now, Cinna, now, Metellus, what Ligarius, I have an hour's talk in store for you. Be near me, that I may remember you. Caesar, I will. And so near will I be that your best friends shall wish I had been further. Good friends, go in and taste some wine with me, and we, like friends, will straightway go together. Every light is not the same. O oh, Caesar, the heart of Brutus yearns to think upon. Caesar! Beware of Brutus, take heed of Cassius. Come not near Casca, have an eye to Cinna. Mark well, Metellus Simber, Decius Brutus loves thee not. Thou hast wronged Caius Legadius. There is but one mind in all these men, and it is bent against Caesar. If thou beest not a mortal, look about you. Security gives way to conspiracy. The mighty gods defend thee. I, I pray thee, boy, run to the Senate house. Stay not to answer me, but get thou gone. Why dost thou stay? To know my errand, madam. I would have had thee there and here again, ere I could tell thee what to do there. Oh, constancy, be strong upon my side, set a huge mountain between my heart and tongue. I have a man's mind, but a woman's might, and how hard it is for women to keep counsel. Art thou here yet? Madam, what should I do? Run to the capital and nothing else, and so return to you and nothing else. Yes, I bring me word, boy, if thy lord looks well, for he went sickly forth, and take good note what Caesar doth, what suitors press to him. Hark, boy, what noise is that? I hear none, madam. Prithee, listen well. I hear a bustling rumor like a fray, and the wind brings it from the capital. <sighs> Sooth, madam, I hear nothing. Come hither, fellow. Which way hast thou been? At mine own house, good lady. What is the clock? About the ninth hour, lady. Has Caesar yet gone to the capital? Madam, not yet. I go take my stand to see him pass on the capital. Thou hast some suit with Caesar, hast thou not? That I have, lady. If it will please Caesar to be so good to Caesar as to hear me, I shall beseech him to befriend himself. Why, knowst thou any harms intended towards him? None that I know will be, much that I fear my chance. Good morrow to you. Here the street is narrow. I'll get me to a place more void, and there speak to great Caesar as he comes along. <laughs> I must go in. I mean how weak a thing the heart of women is. O oh, Brutus, the heavens speed thee in thine enterprise. Run, Lucius, and commend me to my lord. Say I am merry, but come to me again and bring me word what he doth say to thee. 
The Ides of March are come. I Caesar, but not God. I wish your enterprise today may thrive. What enterprise, Calpurnia? Very well. What said Calpurnia? We wish today our enterprise might thrive. I fear our purpose is discover it. Look how she makes to Caesar. Mark her. Casca, be sudden, for we fear prevention. Brutus, what shall be done? If this be mo known, Cassius or Caesar never shall turn back, for I will slay myself. Cassius, be constant. Calpurnia speaks not of our purposes, for look, she smiles, and Caesar doth not change. Ligarius knows his time. For look you, Brutus, he draws Mark Antony out of the way. Where's Metellus Simber? Let her go and presently prefer her suit to Caesar. She is addressed. Press near and second her. Pasca, you are the first that rears your hand. Are we all ready? What is now amiss that Caesar and his Senate must redress? Most high, most mighty, most puissant Caesar. Metellus Simber throws before thy seat and humble heart. And I must prevent thee, Simber. These couchings and lowly courtesies might fire the blood of ordinary men and turn preordinance and first decree into the law of children. Be not fond to think Caesar bears such rebel blood that will be thawed from the true quality by that which melted fools. I mean, sweet words. Low crooked curtsies and base spaniel fawning, thy brother by decree is banished. No, Caesar doth not wrong, nor without cause will he be satisfied. Is there no voice more worthy than mine own to sound more sweetly in great Caesar's ear for the repealing of my banished brother? I kiss thy hand, but not in flattery, Caesar, desiring thee that Publius Simber may have an immediate freedom of repeal. What? Brutus? Pardon. Caesar, Caesar, pardon. As low as to thy foot doth Cassius fall, to beg enfranchisement for Publius Simber. I could be well moved if I were as you, but I am constant as the northern star, whose true fixed and resting quality there is no fellow in the firmament. The skies are painted with unnumbered sparks. They are all fire, and every one doth shine. But there is but one in all doth hold his place. So in the world, tis furnished well with men, yet in the number I do know but one, that unassailable holds on his rank, unshaked of motion, and that I am he. That I was constant Simba should be banished, and constant do remain to keep him so. O oh, Caesar! Hence will thou lift up Olympus! Great Caesar! Doth Brutus bootless nail! Speak hands for me! Ah! Down! Ah! 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 That too, Brute. <laughs> then fall, Caesar. Liberty, freedom, tyranny is dead. Run hence, proclaim it about in the streets. People and senators, be not affrighted. Fly not, stand still. Ambition's debt is paid. Go to the pulpit, Brutus. Cassius, too. Where is Antony? Fled to his house amazed. Men, wives, and children stare, cry out and run as if we're doomsday. Fates, we will know your pleasures. That we shall die, we know. Tis but the time in drawing days out that men stand upon. Why, he that cuts off twenty years of life cuts off so many years of fear and death. Grant that, and then death is a benefit. So are we Caesar's friends that have abridged his time of fearing death. 
Stoop, Romans, stoop, and let us bathe our hands in Caesar's blood up to the elbows and besmear our swords. Then we walk forth, even to the marketplace. Let's all cry, peace, freedom, and liberty. What? Shall we forth? Aye, every man away. Brutus shall lead, and we will grace his heels with the most boldest and best hearts of Rome. Soft. Who comes here? A friend of Antony's. Uh, thus did Mark Antony bid me fall down, and being prostrate, thus he bade me say, Brutus is noble, wise, valiant, and honest. If Brutus will vouchsafe, that Antony may safely come to him and be resolved how Caesar hath de deserved to lie in death. Mark Antony shall not love Caesar dead, so well as Brutus living, but will follow the fortunes and affairs of noble Brutus. My master is a wise and valiant Roman. I've never thought him worse. So please him, come unto this place. He shall be satisfied and by my honor, depart untouched. I'll fetch him presently. I know that we shall have him well to a friend. We may, but yet have I a mind that fears him much. But here comes Antony. Welcome, Mark Antony. Oh, mighty Caesar, dost thou lie so low? For all thy conquests, glories, tri triumphs, spoils, shrunk to this little measure. Fare thee well. I know not, gentlemen, what you intend. Who else must be let blood? Who else is rank? I do beseech ye, if you bear me hard, fulfill your pleasure. Live a thousand years, I shall not find myself so apt to die. No place shall please me so, no mean of death, than here, by Caesar, and by you cut off, the choice and master spirits of this age. Oh, Antony, beg not your death of us. Though now we must appear bloody and cruel, as by our hands in this our present act you see we do. Yet see you but our hands, our hearts you see not. They are pitiful and pity to the general wrong of Rome. To you our swords have led in points, Mark Antony. Your voice shall be as strong as any man's in the disposing of new dignities. Only be patient till we have appeased the multitude, beside themselves with fear, and then we will deliver you the cause. Why, I that did love Caesar when I struck him, have thus proceeded. I doubt not of your wisdom. Let each man render me his bloody hand. First, Marcus Brutus, will I shake with you. Next, Caius Cassius, do I take your hand. Now, Dacius Brutus. Yours now, Metellus. Yours, Cinna. And, my valiant Casca, yours. The last, not last in love, yours, good Ligarius. Gentlemen all. Alas, what shall I say? That I did love thee, Caesar, oh, tis true. If then thy spirit look upon us now, would it not grieve thee dearer than thy death to see thy Antony making his peace? Shaking the bloody fingers of thy foes. Forgive me, Julius. Here wast thou bade, brave heart. Here didst thou fall, and here thy hunter sent, signed in thy spoil and crimsoned in thy leith. O world, thou wast the forest to this heart, and this, O world, the heart of thee. Mark Antony! Uh, pardon me, Caius Cassius. The enemies of Caesar shall say this. Then, in a friend, it is cold modesty. 
I blame you not for praising Caesar so. But what compact mean you to have with us? Will you be pricked in number of our friends, or shall we on and not depend on you? Uh, friends are I with you all, and love you all, uh, upon this hope, that you shall give me reasons why in we in Caesar was dangerous. Or else were this a savage spectacle. Our reasons are so full of good regard that were you, Antony, the son of Caesar, you should be satisfied. That's all I seek. And am moreover, suitor, that I may produce his body to the marketplace, and in the pulpit, as becomes a friend, speak in the order of his funeral. Shall, Mark Antony. Brutus, a word with you. You know not what you do. Do not consent that Antony speak in his funeral. Know you how much the people may be moved by that which he will utter? By your pardon, I will myself into the pulpit first and show the reason of our Caesar's death. What Antony shall speak, I will protest. He speaks by leave and by permission. It shall advantage us more than do us wrong. I know not what may fall. I like it not. Mark Antony, here, take you Caesar's body. You shall not, in your funeral speech, blame us, but speak all good you can devise of Caesar. And say you do it by our permission, else shall you not have any hand at all about his funeral, and you shall speak in turn and by permission, after my speech is ended. Be it so, I do desire no more. Prepare the body, then, and follow us. Oh, pardon me, thou bleeding piece of earth, that I am meek and gentle with these butchers. Thou art the ruins of the noblest man that ever lived in the tide of times. Over thy wounds, now do I prophesy. A curse shall light upon the limbs of men. Domestic fury and fierce civil strife shall cumber all the parts of Italy. And Caesar's spirit, ranging for revenge, shall in these confines with a monarch's voice cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war, that this foul deed shall smell above the earth with carrion men groaning for burial. You serve Octavius, Caesar, do you not? I do, Mark Antony. Caesar did right for him to come to Rome. He did receive his letters and is coming and bid me say to you by word of mouth, O oh, Caesar. My heart is big. Get thee apart and weep. Passion I see is catching, for mine eyes, seeing those beads of sorrow stand in thine, begin to water. Is thy master coming? He lies tonight within seven leagues of Rome. Post back with speed and tell him what that chance. Here is a mourning Rome, a dangerous Rome. No Rome of safety for Octavius yet. High hands and tell him so. And yet, stay a while. Thou shalt not back till I have borne this corpse into the marketplace. There shall I try in my, my oration how the people take the cruel issue of these bloody men. Lend me your hand. We will be. We will be satisfied. Let us be satisfied. Then follow me, and give me audience, friends. Noble Brutus is ascended. Hush. Romans, countrymen, and lovers, hear me for my cause. Censure me in your wisdom, and awake your senses, that you may be the better judge. If there be any in this assembly, any dear friend of Caesar's, to him I say that Brutus's love was no less than his. If then that friend demand why Brutus rose against Caesar, this is my answer. 
Not that I loved Caesar less, but that I loved Rome more. Had you rather Caesar were living and die all slaves than that Caesar were dead to live all free men? As Caesar loved me, I weep for him. As he was fortunate, I rejoice at it. As he was valiant, I honor him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. There is tears for his love, joy for his fortune, honor for his valor, and death for his ambition. Who is here so base that would be a bondman? If any speak for him have I offended. Who is here so vile that would not be a Roman? If so, speak. For him have I offended. Who is here so rude that would not love his country? None, Brutus, none. None, none. Then none have I offended. I have done no more to Caesar than you shall do to Brutus. Here comes his body, mourned by Mark Antony, who though he had no hand in his death, shall receive the benefit of his dying, a place in the commonwealth. Which of you shall not? With this I depart, that as I slew my best lover for the good of Rome, I have the same dagger for myself when it shall please my country to need my death. Live, live, Brutus, live. Bring him a triumph home into his house. Give him a statue with his ancestors. My countrymen. Silence. Brutus speaks. Good countrymen, let me depart alone. And for my sake, stay here with Antony. Do grace to Caesar's corpse, and grace his speech tending to Caesar's glories, which Mark Antony, by our permission, is allowed to make. I do entreat you, not a man depart, save I alone, till Mark Antony hath spoke. For Brutus' sake, I am beholding to you. For best he speak no harm of Brutus here. This Caesar was a tyrant. Peace. Let us hear what Antony can say. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault, and grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here, under leave of Brutus and the rest. For Brutus is an honorable, honorable man. So are they all, all honorable men. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious and Brutus is an honorable man. He hath brought many captives home to Rome, whose ransoms did the general coffers fill. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor hath cried, Caesar hath wept! Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. You all did see that on the Luber call, I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet, Brutus says he was ambitious, and sure, he is an honorable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but here I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once not without cause. What cause withholds you then to mourn for him? Oh, judgment! Thou art fled to brutish beasts, and men have lost their reason! Bear with me. 
My heart is in the coffin there with Caesar, and I must pause till it come back to me. There's much reason in his saying. Aren't he his words? not found. Now mark him. He begins again to speak. Oh, masters, if I were disposed to stir your hearts and minds to mutiny and rage, I should do Brutus wrong and Cassius wrong, who you all know are honorable men. I will not do them wrong. I rather choose to wrong the dead, to wrong myself and you, than will I wrong such honorable men. But... Here's a parchment bearing the seal of Caesar. I found it in his closet. Tis his will. Uh, which, pardon me, I do not mean to read. The will! The, the will. will! We will hear, we will hear will. Caesar's will! Uh, here. Have patience, gentle friends. I must not read it. It is not me you know how Caesar loved you. You are not wood, you are not stones, but men. And men, hearing the will of Caesar, it will inflame you, it will make you mad. Bill, we'll hear it, Antony. You shall read us the will, Caesar's will. Will you be patient? Will you stay a while? I fear I have overshot myself to tell you of it. I fear I have wronged the honorable men whose daggers have stabbed Caesar. I do fear it. They were traitors, honorable men. The will, the testament. You will compel me then to read the will? Then make a ring about the corpse of Caesar and let me show you him that made the will. Shall I descend? And will you give me leave? If you have tears, prepare to shed them now. Look, in this place ran Cassius' dagger through. See what a rent the envious Casca made. Through this the well-beloved Brutus stabbed, and mark how as he plucked his cursed steel away, how the blood of noble Caesar followed it. As rushing out of doors to be resolved, if Brutus so unkindly knocked or no. For Brutus, as you know, was Caesar's angel. Judge, O oh you gods, how dearly Caesar loved him. This was the most unkindest cut of all. For when the noble Caesar saw him stab, ingratitude, more strong than traitor's arms, quite vanquished him, then burst his mighty heart. Oh, now you weep, and I perceive you feel the dint of pity. These are gracious drops. Kind souls, what weep you when you but behold our Caesar's vesture wounded? Look you here, here is himself marred, as you see, with traitors. Pity a spectacle. Oh, noble Caesar! We will be revenged! Revenge! About! Seek! Burn! Fire! Kill! Slay! Let not a traitor live! Stay, countrymen! Peace there! Hear the noble Antony! We'll hear him! We'll follow him, we'll die with him. Good friends, sweet friends, let me not stir you up to such a sudden flood of mutiny. They that have done this deed are honorable. I am no orator, as Brutus is, but as you know me all, a plain, blunt man, for I have neither wit, nor words, nor worth. I tell you that which you yourselves do know. Show you sweet Caesar's wounds, poor, poor, dumb mouths, and bid them speak for me. But were I Brutus, and Brutus Antony, 
There were an Antony who would ruffle up your spirits and put a tongue in every wound of Caesar's that should move the stones of Rome to rise and mutiny! We'll, mu we'll mutiny! We'll mutiny! We'll burn the house of Brutus! Away then! Come seek the conspirators! And yet hear me, countrymen, yet hear me speak! Here's the will, and under Caesar's seal, to every Roman citizen he gives, to every several man, 75 drachmas. Moreover, he hath left you all his walks, his new planted orchards, and private arbors on this side Tiber. He hath left them you and to your heirs forever common pleasures to walk abroad and recreate yourselves. Here was a Caesar. When comes such another? Never, never come away. We'll burn his body in the holy place and with the brands we'll fire the traitor's houses. Take up the body. Go, fire. Block down forms, windows, anything. Now let it work. Mischief thou art afoot, take thou what course thou wilt. How now, fellow? Sir, Octavius has already come to Rome. Where is he? He and Lepidus are at Caesar's house. And thither will I straight to visit him. I heard him say, Brutus and Cassius are rid like madmen through the gates of Rome. Be like they had some notice of the people, how I had moved them. Bring me to Octavius. I dreamt tonight that I did feast with Caesar, and things unlucky charge my fantasy. I have no wills to wander forth of doors, yet something leads me forth. What is your name? Whither are you going? Where do you dwell? What is my name? Whither am I going? Where do I dwell? I am going to Caesar's funeral. As a friend or an enemy? As a friend. For your dwelling briefly. Briefly, I dwell by the capital. Your name, sir. Truly. Truly, my name is Cinna. Tear him to pieces. He's a conspirator. I am Cinna the poet. I am Cinna the poet. Tear him for his bad verses. I am not Cinna the conspirator. Is no his name is Cinna! Tear him, tear him! Come, brands, oh, firebrands! To Brutus, to Cassius, burn all! Some to Decius' house, and some to Casca's, some to Ligarius! Away, go!
These many, then, shall die. Their names are Prit. Your brother must die. Consent you, Lepidus. I do consent. Put him down, Antony. Upon condition that Publius shall not live, who is your sister's son, Mark Antony. He shall not live. Look, with a spot I damn him. But, uh, Lepidus, go into Caesar's house, fetch the will hither, and we shall determine how to cut off some charge and legacies. What shall I find you here? Or here, or at the capital. This is a slight, unmeritable man, need to be sent on errands. Is it fit that the threefold world divided, he should stand one of the three to share it? So you thought him. He took his voice who should be pricked to die in our black sentence and prescription. Octavius, I have seen more days than you, and though we lay these honors on this man to, to save ourselves from divers slanderous loads, he shall but bear them as the ass bears gold, to groan and sweat under the business. You pride and valiant soldier. So is my horse, Octavius, and for that I do appoint him store of provender. It is a te creature that I teach it to fight, to wind, to stop, to run directly on. This corporal motion governed by my spirit. And in some taste is Lepidus but so. He must be taught and trained and bid go forth. A barren spirited fellow. Now, Octavius, listen great things. Brutus and Cassius are levying powers. We must straight make, make head. Therefore, let our alliance be combined, and let us presently go sit and counsel how covert matters may be best disclosed, and open perils surest answered. Let us do so, for we are at the stake and bait about with many enemies. And some that smile have in their hearts, I fear, millions of mischief. What now, Lucilius? Is Cassius near? She is at hand, and Pindris has come to do you salutations from his master. She greets me well. Your master Pindarus hath given me some worthy cause to wish things done undone, but if she be at hand, I shall be satisfied. I do not doubt but that my noble master will appear, such as she is, full of regard and honor. She is not doubted. A word, Lucilius, how she received you. Uh, with courtesy and with respect enough, but not with such familiar instances as she hath used of old. Thou hast described a hot friend cooling. Ever note, Lucilius, when love begins to sicken and decay, it useth an enforced ceremony. They mean this knight in Sardis to be quartered. The greater part, the horse in general, are come with Cassius. Hark, she is arrived. Most noble brother, you have done me wrong. Judge me, you gods. Wrong I mine enemies? And if not so, how should I wrong a sister? Brutus, this sober form of yours hides wrongs, and when you do then- Cassius, be content. Speak your grief softly. I do know you well. Before the eyes of both our armies here, let us not wrangle. Bid them move away. Then in my tent, Cassius, enlarge your griefs, and I'll give you audience. Pindarus. Bid our commanders lead their charges off a little from this ground. You have condemned and noted Lucius Pella for, ha for taking bribes here of the Sardians, wherein my letters praying on his side because I knew the man were slighted off. Let me tell you, Cassius, you yourself are much condemned to have an itching palm to sell and mart your offices for gold to undeservers. I, an itching palm? You know that you are Brutus that speak this, or by the gods this speech were else your last. The name of Cassius honors this corruption, and chastisement doth therefore hide her head. Chastisement? Remember, March. The Ides of March, remember. Do not great Julius bleed for justice sake. What villain touched this body that did stab and not for justice? What shall one of us that struck the foremost man of all this world contaminate our fingers with base bribes? 
and sell the mighty space of our large honors for so much trash as may be grasped thus. I had rather be a dog and bay the moon than such a Roman. Brutus, bait not me. I'll not endure it. You forget yourself to hedge me in. I am a soldier. I older in practice, abler than yourself to make decisions. Go to, you are not, Cassius. I am. I say you are not. Must I stand and give way to your rash collar? Shall I be frighted when a madman stares? Oh, ye gods, ye gods, must I endure all this? All this? I, more, fret till your proud heart break. Must I stand and observe you? Must I stand and crouch under your testy humor? By the gods, you shall digest the venom of your spleen, though it do split you. For from this day forth, I'll use you for my mirth. Yea, for my laughter, when you are waspish. Is it come to this? You say you are a better soldier. Let it appear so. Make your vaunting true. For mine own part, it shall please me well, and I shall be glad to learn of noble men. You wrong me every way. You wrong me, Brutus. I said an elder soldier, not a better. Did I say better? If you did, I care not. When Caesar lived, he durst not thus have moved me. Peace, peace, you durst so not have tempted him. Not? No. What? Durst not tempt him? For your life, you durst not. Do not presume too much upon my love. I may do that I shall be sorry for. You have done that you should be sorry for. There is no terror, Cassius, in your threats. For I am armed so strong in honesty that they pass by me as the idle wind, which I respect not. I did send to you for certain sums of gold which you denied me, for I can raise no money by vile means. By heaven, I'd rather coin my heart and drop my blood for drachmas than to wring from the hard hands of peasants their vile trash by any indirection. I did send to you for gold to pay my legions which you denied me. Was that done like Cassius? Should I have answered Caius, Cassius so? When Marcus Brutus grows so covetous to lock such rascal counters from his friends, be ready, gods, with all your thunderbolts. Dash him to pieces! I denied you not. You did. I did not. He was but a fool that brought my answer back. Brutus hath rived my heart. A friend should bear his friend's infirmities. Brutus makes mine greater than they are. I do not, till you practice them on me. You love me not. I do not like your faults. Friendly eye could never see such faults. That flatterers would not, though they do appear as huge as high Olympus. Come, Antony, and young Octavius, come. Revenge yourselves alone on Cassius, for Cassius is a weary of the world, hated by one she loves. Oh, I could weep my spirit from mine eyes. There is my dagger, and here my naked breast, within a heart dearer than Plutus mine. Richer than gold, strike as thou didst Caesar, for I know when thou didst hate him worse, thou lovest him better than ever thou lovest Caesar, Cassius. Sheath your dagger. No, Cassius, you are yoked as a lamb that carries anger as the flint bears fire, who much in force it shows a hasty spark and straight is cold again. Hath Cassius lived to be but mirth and laughter to her Brutus when grief and blood ill-tempered vexeth her? When I spoke that, I was ill-tempered too. Do you confess so much? Give me your hand. And my heart, too. Oh, Brutus! What's the matter? Have you not love enough to bear with me when that rash humor which my mother gave me makes me forgetful? <sighs> yes, Cassius. And from henceforth, when you are over earnest with your Brutus, he'll think your mother chides and leave you so. Lucilius, Titinius, bid the commanders prepare to lodge their companies tonight. 
And come yourselves and bring Masala with you. I did not think you could have been so angry. Oh, Cassius. I'm sick of many griefs. No man bears sorrow better. Portia is dead. <sighs> Portia! She's dead. How scaped I killing when I crossed you so? Oh, insupportable and touching loss upon what sickness? Impatient of my absence. And grief that young Octavius and Mark Antony had made themselves so strong. For with her death that tidings came. In her absence, her attendees' absence, she swallowed fire. And died so? Even so. Oh, ye immortal gods! Speak no more of her. Give me a bowl of wine. Come in, Titanius. Welcome. Good masala? Of course. Thou art gone. No more. No more, I pray you. Masala, I have here received letters that young Octavius and Mark Antony come down upon us with a mighty power, bending their expedition toward Philippi. Myself have letters of the self-same tenor. With what addition? Octavius, Antony, and Lepidus have put to death an hundred senators. Therein our letters do not well agree. Mine speak of seventy senators that died by their prescriptions, Cicero being one. Cicero won. Cicero is dead, and by that order of prescription. Have you your letters from your wife, my lord? No, Masala. Nor nothing in your letters rid of her? Nothing, Masala. That me thinks is strange. Why well, ask you? Have you aught of her and yours? No, my lord. Now, as you are a Roman, tell me true. Then like a Roman, bear the truth I tell. For certain she is dead, and by strange manner. Why, farewell, Portia. We must die, Masala, with meditating that she must die once. I have the patience to endure it now. I have as much of this in art as you, but yet my nature could not bear it so. Well, to our work alive, what do you think of marching to Philippi presently? I do not think it good. Your reason? This it is. Tis better that the enemy seek us, so shall he waste his means, weary his soldiers, doing himself offense, whilst we lying still are full of rest, defense, and nimbleness. Good reasons must of force give place to better. The people twixt Philippi and this ground do stand but in a forced affection. The enemy marching along by them, by them shall make a fuller number up. From which advantage shall we cut them off? If at Philippi we do face him here, these people at our back. Hear me, good brother. Under your pardon, you must know beside that we have tried the utmost of our friends. Our legions are brimful. Our cause is ripe. The enemy increaseth every day. We at the height are ready to decline. On such a full sea as we are now afloat, and we must take the current when it serves or lose our ventures. Then with your will, go on. We'll along ourselves and meet them at Philippi. There's no more to say? No more. Good night. Early tomorrow we will rise and hence. Lucius, my gown? Farewell, Gunasala. Good night and good repose. Oh, my dear brother. This was an ill beginning of the night. Never come such divisions twixt our souls. Everything is well. Good night, Lord Brutus. Good night, Lord Brutus. Farewell, everyone.
Give me the gown. Where's thy instrument? Here in the tent. <clears throat> what, thou speak so drowsily? Poor knave, I blame thee not. Thou art o'erwatched. Canst thou hold thy heavy eyes a while and then touch thy instrument a strain or two? Aye, my lord, and please you. It does, my boy. I trouble thee too much, but thou art willing. I know young blood's look for a time of rest. I've slept, my lord, already. Well done. And you shall sleep again. I will not hold thee long. And if I do live, I will be good to thee. This is a sleepy tune. Oh, murderous slumber. Layest thou thy leaden mace upon my boy that plays thee music. Gentle knave, good night. I will not do thee so much wrong to wake thee. Ill, this taper burns. <gasps> Who comes here? I think it is the weakness of mine eyes that shapes this monstrous apparition. Art thou some god, some angel, or some devil that makes my blood cold and my hair to stare? Speak to me what thou art. Thy evil spirit. Why comest thou? To tell thee, thou shalt see me at Philippi. Well, then I shall see thee again? Aye, at Philippi. I shall see thee at Philippi then. But now I have taken heart, thou vanishes. Ill spirit, I would hold more talk with thee. Lucius, awake! Um, my lord. Didst thou dream, Lucius, that thou criedst out? My lord, I do not know that I did cry. Yes, thou didst. Didst thou see anything? Nothing, my lord. Go, and commend me to my cousin Cassius. Bid her set on her powers betimes before, and we will follow. It shall be done, my lord. No, Antony, our hopes are answered. You said the enemy would not come down, but keep the hills in the upper regions. It proves not so. Their battles are at hand. They mean to warn us at Philippi here, answering before we do demand of them. Octavius, lead your battle softly on upon the left hand of the even field. Upon the right hand I keep thou the left. Why do you cross me in this exigent? I do not cross you, but I will do so. They stand and would have parley. Make forth. The generals would have some words. They're not until the signal. Words before blows. Is it so, countrymen? Not that we love words better as you do. Good words are better than bad blows, Octavius. In your bad blows, Brutus, you give good words. Witness the hole you made in Caesar's heart, crying, Long live, hail Caesar. To me. You showed your teeth like apes and fawned like hounds, and bowed like bondmen kissing Caesar's feet, while damned Casca, like a cur, behind struck Caesar in the neck, oh you flatterers. Flatterers? Now, Brutus, thank yourself. This tongue had not offended so today if Cassius might have ruled. I draw a sword against conspirators, and think you that the sword goes up again. Never till Caesar's three and thirty wounds will he be avenged. Will another Caesar have added slaughter to the sword of traitors? Caesar, thou canst not die by traitors' hands unless thou bringst them with thee. So I hope I was not born to die on Brutus' sword. A peevish schoolboy, worthless of such honor, joined okay. with her and a reveler. Old Cassius still. Come, Antony, away! Defiance! 
Traitors, hurl we in your teeth. If you dare fight today, come to the field. Why now blow wind, swell billow and swim bark. The storm is up and all is on the hazard. Oh, Lucilius. Hark, a word with you. My lord. Masala. What says my general? Masala, this is my birthday. As this very day was Cassius born. Give me thy hand, Masala. Be thou my witness, that against my will, as Pompey was, am I compelled to set upon one battle all our liberties. Coming from Sardis, on our former ensign, two mighty eagles fell, and there they perched, gorging and feeding from our soldiers' hands. This morning they were fled away and gone. And in their steads do ravens, crows, and kites fly o'er our heads, and downward look on us as we were sickly prey. Their shadows seem a canopy most fatal, under which our army lies, ready to give up the ghost. Believe not so. I but believe it partly, for I am fresh of spirit and resolved to meet all perils very constantly. Even so, Lucilius. Now, most noble Brutus, let's reason with the worst that may befall. If we do lose this battle, then is this the very last time we shall speak together? What are you then determined to do? Even by the rule of that philosophy by which I did blame Cato for the death which he did give himself, I know not how, but I do find it cowardly and vile for fear of what might fall so to prevent the time of life, arming myself with patience to stay the providence of some high powers that govern us below. Then... If we lose this battle, you are contented to be led in triumph through the streets of Rome? No, Cassius, no. Think not, thou noble Roman, that ever Brutus will go bound to Rome. He bears too great a mind. But this same day must end the work the Ides of March begun. And whether we shall meet again, I know not. Therefore, I everlasting farewell take. Forever. And forever farewell, Cassius. If we do meet again, why, we shall smile. If not, why then, this parting was well made. Forever and forever farewell, Brutus. If we do meet again, we'll smile indeed. If not, tis true, this parting was well made. Why, then lead on. Oh, that a man might know the end of this day's business ere it come. But it sufficeth that the day will end, and then the end is known. Come ho, away! Ride, Masala, ride, and give these bills unto the legion on the other side. Let them set on at once, for I perceive but a cold demeanor in Octavius' wing, and sudden push gives them the overthrow. Ride, ride, Masala, let them all come down!
Well, Cassius, Brutus gave the word too early, who, having some advantage on Octavius, took it too eagerly. His soldiers fell to spoil, whilst we by Antony are all enclosed. Fly further off, my lady, further off. Mark Antony is in your tents, my lady. Fly, therefore, noble Cassius, fly far off. This hill is far enough. Look. Look, Titinius. Are those my tents where I perceive the fire? They are, Cassius. Titinius, if thou lovest me, mount thou my horse and hide thy spurs in him till he have brought thee up to yonder troops and... Here again, that I may rest assured whether yon troops are friend or enemy. I will be here again, even with the thought. Go, Pindarus. Get higher on that hill. My sight was ever thick. Regard to Tinius and tell me what thou noticed about the field. This day, I breathed first. Time is come round, and where I did begin, there I shall end. My life has run his compass. Thra, what news? Oh, uh, my lady. What news? Titinius is enclosed round about with a horseman that make to him on the spur, yet, yet he spurs on. Now they are almost on him. Now, Titinius! Now some light. Oh, he lights too. His tail and heart. They shout for joy. Go! Oh, coward that I am to live so long to see my best friend Tain before my face. Come hither, sirrah. In Parthia did I take thee prisoner, and then I swore thee saving of thy life that whatsoever I did bid thee do. Thou shouldst attempt it. Come now. Keep thine oath. Now. Be a free man. And with this good sword that ran through Caesar's bowels, search this bosom. Stand not to answer. Here! Take thou the hilts. Guide thou the sword. Caesar, thou art revenged, even with the sword that killed thee. So I am free, yet would not so have been, durst I have done my will. Oh, Cassius! Far from this country Pindarus shall run, where never Roman shall take note of him. It is but change to Tinius, for Octavius is overthrown by noble Brutus' power, as Cassius' legions are by Antony. These tidings will well comfort Cassius. <gasps> is not that she that lies upon the ground? She lies not like the living. Oh, my heart! Is not that she? No, this was she, Masala. But Cassius is no more. O oh, setting sun, as in thy red rays thou dost sink tonight, though in her red blood Cassius' day is set. His trust of good success hath done this deed. O oh, hateful error! Melancholy child, why dost thou show to the apt thoughts of men the things that are not? O oh, ever soon conceived, thou never comest unto a happy birth, but kill'st the mother that engendered thee. What, Pindarus? Where art thou, Pindarus? Seek him to Tinius, whilst I go to meet the noble Brutus, thrusting this report into his ears. I may say thrusting it for piercing steel, and darts in venomage shall be as welcome to the ears of Brutus as tidings of this sight. Hi you, Masala. And I will seek for Pindarus for the while. Why didst thou send me forth, brave Cassius? Did I not meet thy friends, and did they 
And did they not put on my brow this wreath of victory and bid me give it thee? Didst thou not hear the shouts? Alas, thou hast misconstrued everything. But hold thee. Take this garland on thy brow. Thy Brutus bid me give it thee, and I will do his bidding. Brutus, come apace and see how I regard Caius Cassius. By your leave, gods. This is a Roman's part. Come, Cassius' sword, and seek Titinius' heart. Where? Where, Masala, doth her body lie? Lo, yonder, and Titinius mourning it. Titinius' face is upward. He is slain. Oh, Julius Caesar, thou art mighty yet. Thy spirit walks abroad and turns our swords into our own proper entrails. Brave Titinius. Are yet two Romans living such as these? It is impossible that ever Rome should breed thy fellow. Friends, I owe more tears to her here dead than you shall see me pay. I shall find time, Cassius. I shall find time. Come, therefore, and to Thaso send her body. Her funeral shall not be in our camp. Masala, Cato, set our battles on. Tis three o'clock, and Romans yet ere night. We shall try fortune in a second fight. Countrymen. Oh, yet hold up your heads. What bastard doth not? Who will go with me? I will proclaim my name about the field. I am the son of Marcus Cato. Oh, a foe to tyrants and my country's friend. I am the son of Marcus Cato. Oh, and I am Brutus. Marcus Brutus, I. Brutus, my country's friend. Know me for Brutus. Ha! Uh, uh, oh, young and noble Cato, art thou down? Ha! Yield or thou diest! Only I yield to die. Kill Brutus and be honored in his death. We must not. A noble prisoner, Rumpo, tell Anthony Brutus is tain. Brutus is tain! Brutus is tain, my lord! Where is he? Safe, Anthony. Brutus is safe enough. I dare assure thee that no enemy shall ever take alive the noble Brutus. The gods defend him from some greatest shame. This is not Brutus, friends, but I assure you, a prize no less in worth. Keep this man safe and see whether Brutus be alive or dead. Come, poor remains of friends. Rest on this rock. Sit thee down, Lucius. Slaying is the word. It is a deed in fashion. Hark thee, Lucius. What, I, I, my lord? No, not for all the world. Peace, then. No words. Come hither. Good Volumnius. What's the word? What says my lord? Why this, Philomius? 
The ghost of Caesar hath appeared to me, two several times by night, at Sardis once, and here last night, in Philippi fields. I know my hour is come. Not so, my lord. Nay, I am sure it is, Volumnius. Thou seest the world, Volumnius, how it goes. Our enemies have beat us to the pit. It is more worthy to leap in ourselves than tarry till they push us. Good Volumnius, holdst thou my sword's hilt whilst I run on it? That's not an office for a friend, my lord. Fly, fly, my lord, there's no tarrying here. Farewell to you. And you. And you. Volumnius, farewell to thee too, Lucius. Countrymen, my heart doth joy that yet in all my life I found no man, but he was true to me. I shall have glory by this losing day, more than Mark Antony and Octavius. By this vile conquest shall attain unto. So, fare you well. At once, so Brutus's tongue hath almost ended his life's history. Fly, fly, fly! Hence! Fly, my lord, fly. I will follow. I pray thee, Lucius, stay thou by thy lord. Thou art a fellow of good respect. Hold then my sword, and turn away thy face while I do run upon it. Wilt thou, Lucius? Give me your hand first. Farewell. Fare you well, my lord. Farewell. Farewell, good Lucius. <coughs> Caesar, now be still. I kill not thee, so hath good will. <sighs> man is that? My master's man. Lucius, where is thy master? Free from the bondage you are in, Masala. The conquerors can but make a fire of him. For Brutus only overcame himself. And no man else hath honor by his death. So Brutus should be found. I thank thee, Brutus, that thou hast proved Lucilius saying true. I'd my master, Lucius. I held the sword, and he did run on it. This was the noblest Roman of them all. All the conspirators, save only he, did that they did in envy of great Caesar. He only, in a general, honest thought and common good to all, made one of them. His life was gentle, and the elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to all the world, This was a man. According to his virtue, let us use him with all respect and rights of burial. So call the field to rest. And let's away to part the glories of this happy day. Mm -hmm.